Hey guys, in this methods lesson we're going to look at TOEFL reading skill number three which is the question type called make an inference. What is an inference? Well, first of all, what does the question type look like? It will look like this on test day. On the left hand side you'll have your paragraph of text. On the right hand side you'll have your question. And just before I move on, actually, you can see in the question prompt that it says this, it can be inferred. So we know that this is the inference question here from this word here, inferred. Fine. So what do you have to do? Well, to infer what is meant by a sentence or phrase means that you understand the meaning behind what is said. In other words, the meaning won't be explicitly said. You have to sort of read between the lines. You have to sort of uh, understand the meaning behind what is said. For example, let's say, let's say I'm sitting in your house with you and I say, Ooh, it's cold because the window is open. So what's the inference here? I want you to close the window, but instead of explicitly saying to you, hey, close the window, I sort of say something that refers to the window being open and it's cold. And so you sort of think, okay, I'm going to close the window because Jay must be cold. That's an inference. You have inferred something that I said because I didn't say it explicitly. I said it implicitly. You read between the lines. Cool. That's what this one's all about. It's a bit tricky. So an inference is not directly stated in the text. You infer, you draw a conclusion about something based on information at hand. So we need a method for this one because it's tricky. So first you need to read the question prompt and the options. Reread the relevant section of the text carefully. You eliminate and then you choose. Okay, so let's apply the method. Step one, read the question and look at the answer options. So we look here first. It says from paragraph two, it can be inferred that spiders can display emotions. It can be inferred that spiders can communicate with each other. It can be inferred that spiders have the ability to think. It can be inferred that spiders live in communities in some areas of the world. Okay, fine. Then we move to step two and we want to reread the relevant section of the text carefully, which is here. Now it says from paragraph two and here you can see the number two, it's hidden from my little text thing, but it says on the ecological battlefield, friendly spiders are the first to fall. A new study shows that the behavior of individual animals can determine the fate of entire communities. Most spiders are loners, but Anilisomia studiosus lives in forests of the Americas in colonies of up to 200 related individuals that build communal webs called silken reefs. The reefs attract other spider species and some steal food and even prey on Anilisomesis or whatever that scientific word is. As a result, the colony usually collapses within a few years. But occasionally the reef lasts longer, growing to several times the size of a large car and containing more than 50 spider species. Step three, eliminate possible incorrect answers. This is pretty tough. So what we want to eliminate here are things that are explicitly said, because remember that an inference is not explicitly stated. It's implicitly. It's be. It's the meaning behind the text. So anything that's actually said explicitly, we want to eliminate because that is not an inference. So spiders can display emotions. Well, first of all, the other thing we want to eliminate is does it actually say that at all? I, 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 it says, it says, it, it shows the behavior of individual animals. Um, 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 it says, it says most spiders are loners. Um, 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 it, it, it also says, no, we can eliminate A because it just doesn't say that. So we can eliminate B. Can communicate with each other. Well, we can assume that spiders can communicate in some way, but we don't want to make an assumption here. An inference is different to an assumption because the information here in the text doesn't lead me to understand that they can communicate. It doesn't say that. What about the fact that they have the ability to think? Well, again, we can assume that the spiders can think, of course, but 
it, 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 there's nothing, there's nothing that in this text that leads me to believe this. So it leaves me with step four, which is choose the remaining answer that spiders live in communities in some areas of the world. So a new study shows that the behavior of individual animals can determine the fate of entire communities. Most spiders are loners. <clears throat> this particular one lives in forests of the Americas. <clears throat> Excuse me. Fine, they build communal webs. So you can see that there are some hints here that lead us to this answer. For example, it doesn't say explicitly that spiders live in communities in some areas of the world, but it does say a few things that can lead me to understand this. It says most spiders are loners, but some live in forests of, in colonies. They build communal webs. There's a bit of a key word that might lead you to it. Um, and then the colony usually collapses, but occasionally the reef lasts longer, growing to several times the size. <clears throat> excuse me, of a large car and containing more than 50 spider species. This is a bit of a key phrase down here, containing more than 50 spider species. So spiders, it can be inferred that spiders live in communities in some areas of the world. There's our inference. It never explicitly said this, but there are there is information in here that leads me to believe that D is the correct answer. Cool, your turn. I want you to answer this one. I'm gonna give you a minute. Away you go. there's one minute. Cool. Let's have a look at the answer here. The answer is D. So let's go through the method here. We want to read this first and we can tell that it's an inference question from this word here. From paragraph three, it can be inferred that owning exotic pets, let's read the answer options, is becoming more common and Americans are embracing it. It can be inferred that owning exotic pets is not considered to be acceptable. Owning exotic pets is a new trend spreading across America or owning exotic pets is an issue which is open to debate. Now we want to eliminate incorrect ones. First of all, it just never said anything about owning exotic pets becoming more uh, common in America. It just didn't say that. So we can eliminate that. That's not an inference. It just simply, with with inference, it's sometimes it just won't say something. That's not an inference. An inference is when the information in the text leads you to understand something. It's not explicitly stated, but it's there in other words. So when you have something like answer option A, which says it's becoming more common, it just didn't say that at all. So we eliminate that. What about B? It's not considered to be acceptable. Well, down here, this is contradictory. It says these people say it's not only dangerous to bring captive bred wildlife into the suburbs, but it's cruel and it ought to be criminal too. Okay, that that's looking good. But this sentence here contradicts B, yet the issue is far from black or white. So it doesn't say that. So we can eliminate B because B contradicts this. So we've eliminated A, we've eliminated B. Now we've got C. It's a new trend spreading across America. Well, it just doesn't say that at all. And the answer here is D. It's an issue. Owning exotic pets is an issue which is open to debate. And that's because it comes from this particular sentence here. 
the issue is far from black or white. What does that mean if an issue is far from black or white? Well, it means that it's ambiguous. That it means that it's debatable. It means that it's not clear. And so we can read, we can infer from this that the issue is open to debate. Cool. Let's do another one. Again, you'll have one minute starting now. Ten more seconds. I should say, when you're doing this, and when you're you 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 read the answer, the the question prompt, you read the answer options, then you go across to the paragraph, you read that, and what you can do is then you strike off, you eliminate those ones that are wrong. You eliminate those ones that contradict. You eliminate those ones that are explicitly said, not implied, not inferred. And what else do you eliminate? Uh, 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 uh. You eliminate ones that are just incorrect. Okay, I'm going to show you what I mean by that. So the answer is B here. Um, let's first look at B as the answer before we eliminate the rest. So. First of all, it can be inferred that the captain's behavior was detrimental to the survival of some passengers. Passengers, rather, And this comes from this sentence here. This attitude was not helped by Captain Smith, who had not acquainted his senior officers with the full situation. So his behavior, Captain Smith's behavior, in other words, was detrimental to the survival of some passengers. This is the inference we can make here. But let's eliminate A. The Titanic was well designed but unlucky to strike the iceberg. iceberg. Well, it doesn't really say that it was just luck because it says that there was also human error in there, particularly this last sentence here. It, we can eliminate that one there. C, 48 lifeboats would not have been enough. Well, in fact, it didn't even have 48 lifeboats. Um, it, 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 how many did it have? It's, it had... Um, <laughs> 16 lifeboats. They proposed 48 lifeboats, but it only had 16. So this one's just wrong. And then D, the senior officers were prepared in spite of the captain's attitude. Is this an inference we can make here? Well, no. In other words, this does not say this, in other words. So we can eliminate that as well. We don't know what the senior officers thought or what their attitudes were. So B is the only one left there. Cool. Let's do the last one here.
All right, let's look at the answer. So, what can we infer from this paragraph? Okay, let's go through starting with A. Babies are especially perceptive of physical appearance. Well, this is wrong because it says our ability to make this trustworthiness judgment develops as we grow. So that's just incorrect. B, attractive people are more likely to be successful. Well, that's not an inference. It just says it here explicitly. It says attractive people are also considered to be smarter, more sociable and more successful. So that's not an inference. That's explicitly stated, and this is a different type of question. Our judgment of others can often be misguided. Well, it doesn't really say that, does it? That's, that's, that's possibly an inference that we could make from this paragraph, but let's look at D. Boys are less likely to link physical appearance with personality. Now, this is a clear inference because it says here that girls are better at it than boys. So the inference there is that boys are less likely to link physical appearance with personality because girls are better at it than boys. This is the critical statement here, in which case we can make the inference that boys are less likely to link physical appearance with personality. Cool. Thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful. Now you should go and do the practice question so you can nail this one on test day.